Okay, this is our update of our Tustin Windmill project. We're building a replica of the 1870 William Isaac Tustin of San Francisco windmill that was installed at the Sealy Barn at San Diego State Historical Park in San Diego, California. The wheel is a 10 foot diameter wheel. It's a downwind windmill, so this is the wind would be coming this way, blowing through the blades on it as it would spin around. Um, the windmill is complete. We have the wheel arms, which are made out of oak. These are solid oak arms that we've cut to length. This is a swamp cypress blades on it. It's all assembled, ready to go for our first inspection. It seems to come out very, very well. We had a little bit of a challenge through the historic photographs and uh, advertisements that we could find filling out how this uh, band worked here. So we've did our first prototype band. We're sort of anxious to see how this comes out. We think we're on. This is our furling vein. This is really interesting. Now, we discovered a lot of early illustrations by uh, Tustin's windmill, and we found this feather design. We really like this design. It's very unique, but also, as we started putting it together and, and engineering all this out, we found out this is very structurally strong. This pieces of oak come down here, they catch us. So this furling vein is extremely rigid. It's really gonna hold together well. It's gonna take all the pressure of this windmill and spin it out of the wind as it rotates around. We're looking at the windmill. The wind's going to be blowing this way. It's going to be pushing us down like a flag. It'll be down from the mass pipe. Now this is just a test stand that we have it on. This will actually be 40 feet in the air when we're done. The wind's going to hit this furling vein. And as it hits this furling vein, it's going to push it, rotate it over. Now as it rotates over, hits a stop. This tail vane will now cause the windmill to turn out of the wind. So the wind will hit this surface, it'll spin around and be sideways to the wind so it won't hit the blades and slow the windmill down. This is a very unique furling mechanism way of self-regulating speed that was only done in the California windmills. And the pioneer William Isaac Tustin of San Francisco was the first to do this, we believe. So as we come down the tail, we see this furling vein, there's a counterbalance linkage that'll go on right here, and we'll work our way down. Sort of unique, a decorative piece they had on this windmill was this decorative spear down here, which is actually the purpose of this was a counterbalance weight. So it made everything level. And that's one of the fun parts about this is looking at the old photographs, figuring out how they did things and why they did it. It's a very unique style windmill. Now all of these have grease points on them where you'd have to actually go up the tower and grease these as it goes around. Another unique thing about this windmill is these massive wooden blocks. Uh, you're out in California in the 1870s. There was a lot of wood available. These might have been made out of redwood at the time, probably clear heart redwood. We made them out of oak. Large blocks of wood holding this thing together. It sits in Babbitt bearings, just the old fashioned bearings of the time that were poured in place around these cast iron pieces. The cast iron hub, we were able to copy this hub. We used uh, photographs from Australia where they actually have a Tustin hub or a copy of a Tustin hub to come up with this design. Now in our prototype, we just have regular nuts and bolts on here. When we're all done, we'll put square nuts, square bolts on everything, double uh, nut everything to make sure nothing comes apart. But it is very unusual, beautiful, it's very heavy. The hub, the shaft, and the crank plate came out to be 125 pounds, even after we machined out a lot of weight out of it. It's just really strongly built, as most things in the time were. Now, as the windmill goes around, there's a Babbitt piece inside here. As the crank plate goes around, it just moves this pump rod up and down. Now, we just have a piece of pipe in here right now for the temporary, just to test everything out. But it's a simple up and down motion. Now, there are multiple holes in the back of the crank, so you could shorten or lengthen the stroke as it goes along. Here again, we can see the tail vane. It's got two pieces of linkage, temporary nuts and bolts. Then this rod goes all the way down to the ground to a lever that you'll see later on that turns the windmill on and off manually if you wish to do so. It slowly goes over, and there it is. It's furled out of the wind until it hits the stop point at the bottom. It's a very unique design.